Good day and welcome to the weekly discussions where we talk about everything finance and we're a full house again today. Uh, Ruban, PJ joining me there from Pretoria. But gentlemen, before I go over to you, I just, I'm, I'm busy reading the book of uh, Kurs Becker's story, Billions, um, written by TJ Stradom. And when you think of these billionaires or these high net worth people, you you think they might have done one or two things right. And in Kurs Becker's case, most people think he got NASPAS right. And that is why he's so successful, or so rich. And that is partly, yes, definitely. He did call the NASPAS, um, the 10 cent, sorry, the 10 cent deal in NASPAS. He did call that right. But when you look at his story and just how he grew up from the age of 20, he was uh, in the debate team or at school, he was advocating for the debate team. And he was constantly just searching for more and having more appetite for, for, for risk. And then he went overseas and he came back and had the idea of pay TV in South Africa. And then he started um, Mnet and he was instrumental in just the building of Mnet. He started MTN as well and he started Mweb. So there's multiple different companies that he started and all of this builds on top to each other up until where is today, up until where he was with Naspas and Tencent. So the point I'm just trying to make is these people they didn't get lucky. They didn't get one goal right. It's like a constant grinding of being better and having that appetite for risk that eventually makes them so successful or, or creates such a high net worth value for them. It's not one or two calls. It's not luck. It's hard work year by year, decade by decade. And you can say that of most of the billionaires. And goes back a really good book, Ruben. You said you read it as well. Um, I really enjoy it. I'm still halfway through it, so I'm not really towards the end yet, but I'm really enjoying it thus far, and I'm learning a lot from someone like Chris Becker. Ruben, over to you. I know you read the book as well, but what do you have for us today? Yeah, thank you, Jay. Yeah, uh, oh, Chris Becker, yeah, what, a, what an interesting guy. Um, and like, yeah, like you said, over the years, he's, he's just been a, a phenomenal businessman. And um, like you said, it's not one thing that 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 worked. There's there's millions of little things that um, that came together and, and made him a success. So yeah, um, I'm I'm looking into into Standard Chartered and um, the 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 payment that they have to make towards the Competition Commission. Um, they obviously made a settlement with the Competition Commission um, for forex rigging, as they as they call it. So they've been in in litigation in court for. For eight years, um, and finally the competition commission has um, has won. Uh, they've given them an administrative penalty of forty two point seven million rand. Um, now let's be honest, forty two point seven million rand for for quite for, for such a large institution, large bank, um, they don't even feel that, or um, you don't even see that on 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 their statements. So, yeah, I don't think it's 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 enough to be quite honest. Um, before I give my, my, my opinion on it further, um, this is directly from, from MoneyWeb. Um, so as they said, uh, Standard Chartered is one of 28 local and foreign banks accused by the Commission of rigging the US dollar um, rand exchange rate between 2007 and 2013. So, so it's quite a, a, a big story, to be honest. Um, some of the other names there um, is, is Barclays. Barclays Africa, BNP Paribas South Africa, Investec, JP Morgan Chase, Nomura International, Macquarie Group, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Merrill Lynch HSBC, and Citibank. So these are quite quite big names that we're talking about here. Um, honestly, you know they need to prove their, their their innocence and doesn't say that they are guilty if they are named in this. Um, but let's be honest, you know if if if. The administrative penalty was given to Standard Chartered of 42.7 million. Um, they did obviously do something wrong. Um, and I think we all know that there is a lot of collusion um, around the, the big institutional investors. And I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about in, in the global context as well. Um, and I think that is not a, 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 a good penalty. I don't think that is representative of um, the damage that can be done with what they do. I think they should go to prison. I think people should get prison time. And then maybe something will happen in terms of these people colluding with each other, um, fixing prices and 
and you know it took me two minutes it took me absolutely two minutes to google collusion on wall street two minutes and uh, receive uh, feedback yeah it was in august um literally in august this year and i don't think people know about these things especially in south africa um a nearly 500 million dollar settlement agreement by four investment banks over control of the stock loan market is prompting changes to bank practices so so once again look, look at these names goldman sachs group inc morgan stanley jp morgan chase and co and ubs group ag they all they they all agreed to settle claims in 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 a case bought by the pension funds led by the iowa public employees retirement system they 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 filed a lawsuit against them in 2017 so what did they do they were accused of um of conspiring to thwart all electronic trading systems that match stock lenders and borrowers in an effort to preserve the bank's privileged role as a broker on every stock loan trade now that is absolutely collusion there's 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 no doubt about that so these things happen around us and but, but what's my point my point is exactly like i said with standard chartered they do damage to our country and our economy they do damage to retail investors and and what happens to them they get a loan of 42 million 42 million rand i promise you that's in their budget to pay those types of small um penalties so what needs to happen is these people need to go to prison otherwise this will go on forever and it has been going on forever let's be honest with each other and obviously there are many other things happening right now that we are not um, aware of um but like i said prison time is the only thing that's gonna that's gonna work with 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 collusion um price fixing um and and this type of manipulation of of financial markets equity markets um so that's that's my point. I don't know, PJ. Do you have do you have opinion on on this? No, you know it's bad. And like you said, it's the retail investors that is the one suffering on that. So I'll point exactly on that. So the, if you think you can trade forex um, better than the banks, they are manipulating it. So you can't win basically because someone's going to lose, and clearly it's not the banks because they manipulate um the values and it's the same that we talked to previously about bitcoin as well there's big players that's manipulating the market so for a retail you sitting and trading your few rands or dollars of bitcoin you're gonna get crushed that's my opinion i can't think and it's bad you want there to be accountability but we saw in the financial crisis and now you thought after 2008 there will be more repercussions but it's not happening um Esmeri and on an investment committee she went to china and she said there is quite different there and everyone say the china market is a scary market to trade in but there there's actually accountability if they caught people that manipulate the market they actually go to jail and it can't be said about usa or south africa so traders beware that's my opinion on that so yeah so i'm going to go on a different topic so i'm going to talk is cash trash so i'm not talking about forex trading i'm of course talking about when we talk about cash it's investing in the money markets and uh, it's a very stable return you get and that's why people like that because you know what you're going to get especially in times like this interest rates i we may be at the top of the cycle but um the it's very high let me just share my screen can you guys see it okay so the question is is cash trash so again like i think all the answers or all the questions that that were the, the answers the same it depends and it depends a lot on what's your financial goals and i think that's what we talk about and if we just look at the if you've got short-term goals let's say you want to save for a vacation at the end of the year um then you, of course, would need more cash because what's great about cash, it gives you a stable return. Um, you know you're going to get your 6 or 7 or 8% for the next year. So that's great if you want to be one year. But the longer your goals, the farther away the goals are, it's better to bring in a bit of equity. And I'll tell you now why it's better to bring in equity because you do get a bit of volatility. And volatility, the prices can go up and down. But it's better... In the long run 
to know you're going to get to your goal. So if you have a three-year goal, you want to buy a car in three years, then you can say, okay, maybe I need 60, 70% in cash and then equity. If you want to buy a car in five years, uh, a home in five years, it's better to add more equity. And then if you have retirement or anything that 10 plus years, it's better to have most of it in equities. Again, each one's circumstance is different, so it can differ. But that's normally what you say. You have, we have to look at your goals first. Then we're going to start, okay, what's the allocation that you need to cash versus equity? And again, you then also get for, local cash in rands and foreign cash, and you get local equity and foreign equity. And that also depends on your financial goals. And the, the reason why you want to invest in equity in the long run is the biggest um, enemy for wealth creation is inflation. Because, you know, if you've got 100 rand, if you just put under your mattress, you've got 100 rand next year, you can buy less with that one year, 100 rand. So that's inflation. So you are losing buying power if you just keep it like this. So let's take in a 20 year range. So this is long term again. That's why we say if you've got a long time horizon, let's say retirement, you want to be more in equity. And if we say, okay, you've got SA cash in the long run, so this is after inflation is taken off, you see sometimes your 100 rand in 20 years period, you will be worse off. It will be only worth in 96 rand in buying power, or it can be 105. So it depends. There's some periods that there's a big interest rate hike. I can cycle that you actually can get good returns. But you can see after 20 years, there's a period, of, and this is over, over almost a 100 year period, there is times that you are worse off by putting your money into cash, into the money market. A balanced fund is a combination of cash, bonds, equities, foreign equities, foreign assets. And there you can see at the worst of after 20 years, you will just break even. Um, with money in the back, with your buying power, so you're skipping up of inflation. But uh, other periods, you can see you are quite well off. And S equity is, of course, the best way to get make sure over a long period of time you get more actually buying power because all of us want to invest to get richer over the long run, not poorer. And that's why a lot of people say cash is trash over the long run, again, short run. It's not different, but this is also one the one we take. We said time needed to double your money, and again we take this after inflation. A lot of people just say, "Okay, I get ten percent return in the bank. That's great." But just remember, inflation is six percent, so you actually only get a four percent real return. And if you look in the real return, if you invest in cash, it will almost take eighty-eight years for you to double your money in buying power as well. So I know this is a long time horizon, so most of the time you don't want to be there. And SA bonds it will take you 41 years, while S equities, you can double your money in 10 years. Again, there's different cycles, but over the long run, over 88 years, this is the best chance that you had of actually doubling your money. Now, Joe, I don't think if you have got anything to say about this. Yeah. I definitely don't want to wait 88 years. So, but PJ, under very good point then. The thing is what you need is you need patience and discipline to stick to that plan. Because true life example, my client the other day has been investing with me only for six months. And obviously the market hasn't done well in six months. Now he's showing me. So I would have been better off in the money market. And that's exactly that. People think, yes, and he was right. Because you're negative now in your investments in equities. But what was your goals? 100%. If your goal was December holiday, but that wasn't the goal we set out for. We set out for a five-year goal. So you shouldn't look at it short term. You shouldn't change it now to money market. You should have the patience. You should stick to it and continue investing. And that is um, 100% the, the, the human behavior is also very important with what you just said now. So I'm glad you said that. Peter, I'm going to send this to you. You must look at this video. And there's lots of other people that must look at this video. Because it is that the biggest risk of you is not taking risk at all because in the long term, you're going to wait 88 years. No one's got 88 years to double their money. So thank you for that. Thank you, Ruvan. Um, very insightful, as always. I look forward to chatting to you next week.